God is love. O come, let us worship. Our processional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book, hymn number 460. Number 460. Lo, God is here, let us adore, and own how sacred is this place. Let all within us feel his power, and silent bow before his face. Who knows his power, does grace to prove, serve him with all with reverence love. Lo, God is here in day and night, united choirs of angels sing. To him enthroned above all height, hymns host their noblest praises bring. Disdain not, Lord, our meaner song, for oh, praising with a stammering tongue. Almighty Lord, may this our praise, thy courts with grateful fragrance fill. Still may we stand before thy face, still hear and do thy sovereign will. To thee may all thoughts arise, ceaseless accepted sacrifice. Let us pray together the color for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thus shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto thee, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts be beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee. We worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect Epistle and Gospel for the 13th Sunday after Trinity are found beginning on page 237. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of whose only gift it cometh that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, grant we beseech thee that we may so faithfully serve thee in this life, that we fail not finally to attain thy heavenly promises. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, beginning at the 16th verse. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the desire of the flesh. For the desire of the flesh is against the Spirit, and the Spirit is against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, ye, shall, ye, ye are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you beforehand, as I have also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm is Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18, found beginning on page 447. Page 447, Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18. Turn thee again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. O satisfy us with thy mercy, and that soon. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Comfort us again according to the time thou hast afflicted us, and for the years wherein we have suffered adversity. Show thy servants thy work, and their children thy glory. And let the glorious majesty of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper thou the work of our hands upon us, O prosper thou our hand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the tenth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 25th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, thee O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made known, and was crucified also for us under conscious power. He suffered and was made, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sit upon the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the and the life of the world to come. Amen. This do, and you shall live. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. One of the great challenges, I think, with the parable of the Good Samaritan, which we've just heard in this week's Gospel, is the danger of thinking that we already know all that we can know. The danger of thinking that we've heard it so often before that there's nothing new for us to learn that we've already explored as thoroughly as we can all the symbolism of fallen humanity left beaten and half dead at the side of the road, or the moral lessons about the emptiness of the priests and the Levites' outward religious conformity with their inner faith, or how the inn where this poor man is taken might serve as a metaphor for the church, caring for those wounded by the violence of hatred and sin, and how the two denarii, the two pence, as we heard in the gospel, can be understood as the sacraments of baptism in the Holy Eucharist, giving life to the body of Christ. The danger of thinking that we've already heard so many sermons about who our neighbors may or may not be, that we can just move along mentally. Nothing to see here, we might easily imagine. In other words, time to turn our thoughts to what we're planning to do once the service is over. And surely the question of who our neighbors are is central to this parable. After all, Jesus tells this timeless story precisely in response to the lawyer's question regarding who his neighbor is. But what if there's a bit more that we can learn? What if there are some things that we may have overlooked? For example, note a small detail, a very small detail that you may have missed before. The first question that this lawyer asked Jesus has nothing at all to do with who his neighbor might be. It's a question about eternal life. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Perfectly good question. Maybe a question that you've thought about from time to time. Maybe a question that we all should think about from time to time. But know what Jesus says once this lawyer has quoted the scriptures in an attempt to answer his own question. This do, Jesus says, and you will live. This do, and you will live. As in, right now. This moment. Jesus doesn't say, do this and you will inherit eternal life. He doesn't say, do this and you will live forever, or you will live eternally, or you will join me in heaven, or experience eternal bliss, or any of the hundred other things that he could have said that in some way would have paralleled the lawyer's question. Rather, he simply says, do this and you will live, as in right now. You will live right now, this moment. Which makes me think that Jesus is offering this man more than what he's asking for. That Jesus isn't just talking about something that this guy can hope to have sometime down the road. Something that he can have if he follows enough rules and regulations. Something that he can only have after he's dead. If we take what Jesus says at face value, he seems to be saying that life, our life in God's kingdom, your life and my life in and through the reign of God, isn't something that we actually have to wait for. It's something that we can start living right now, even as we wait for the full reality later on. That the life of heaven isn't just some vague kind of future hope. Because of Christ's resurrection, it's also a present reality. And if we accept that, then the parable of the Good Samaritan isn't a story about what we need to do right now if we want to get to heaven when we die. It's not just another kind of rule or regulation that we have to follow if we want to live forever in God's kingdom. It's really, at heart, a story about what we need to do if we want to start living the life of heaven right now by grace. If we want to live, really live. And if we accept that, then the parable of the Good Samaritan seems to be telling us that living the life of heaven, living the kingdom, living in the kingdom of God right now, living risen, resurrected lives means living with sacrifice and compassion. It means seeing all those made in God's image as children of our compassionate God, even our bitterest enemies, whomever they may be. It means that recognizing that no matter who we are or where we come from, 
we all share a fundamental need for God's grace, that no matter how together our lives may or may not seem, in one fundamental way, we are all exactly the same. We all need the saving grace of God in Jesus Christ. And we are called to be little Christ. That's the church's role, to be little Christ, to be compassionate Samaritans to each other. That's what it means to live, really live. And that's why St. Paul writes so boldly in this week's epistle about the difference between what he calls the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. He's not trying to set up his own list of do's and don'ts. He's not just giving us another list of rules and regulations that we have to follow if we want to go to heaven. He's showing us what it means to live risen, resurrected lives right now. He reminds us that if we really want to live, if we really want to live as fully as we can, then we need to live lives of patience and goodness and joy and peace and love. And what it, that means is that the body of Christ needs to be a visible, tangible witness in this very broken world that there is something better, a better way, a resurrected way to live. By starting to live right now the resurrected life that we hope to live then. That means even in the midst of this world's brokenness and division and fear, that means living hopefully rather than fearfully. It means living generously rather than selfishly. It means living patiently and compassionately rather than bitterly and resentfully. Living right now the resurrected life, the risen life that we hope to live then. Showing by the way that we live and hope and love and have that God has promised us a better world, a resurrected world and not waiting until the end to start enjoying it. This do, and you shall live. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. To do good and to mystery you forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have We offer this Holy Eucharist in, in praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God, in thanksgiving for all the gifts that he gives us in Jesus Christ, for the many ways in which Christ comes to us as our good Samaritan, offering us healing, wholeness, and life. And in prayer that as the body of Christ, we might use all the gifts that he has left with us and given to us to live that compassionate, patient, sacrificial life. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that we might share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our bishop, for our, and Paul, our missionary at Bishop McAllister College in Uganda, for Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Ho in Ghana, for Canon Ross Hebb and the people of our sister parish, the parish of St. Peter, and for all of our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Anglican communion, for our fellow Christians everywhere, for our sisters and brothers in the Roman Catholic Church, and Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, for our sisters and brothers in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, and Bishop Michael Price, Bishop of the Eastern Synod, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity, that preserved from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the First Nations, Inuit, and Metis people of Canada, for all those who struggle every day for healing and reconciliation, for those who cope with the effects of systemic racism and abuse, for all those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened and endangered by the climate change crisis, and for a collective will to use all of our natural resources carefully and wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Syria, Iraq, Ukraine, Haiti, and Afghanistan. For all the members of the Canadian Armed Forces as they serve at home in a way to bring peace and safety to troubled regions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love that we might bring it into the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for all the sick, especially Dorothy, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Lyman, Diane, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Joy, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, Wilma, Griffin, Dale, May, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Cedric, Scott, Sarah, Christopher, Ben, Michael, Pat, F Philip, Terry, Aidan, Lisa, Greg, Rael, Marie, Pius, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Charles, Adam, Eric, Paige, Shane, Rochelle, Sherry, Randy, Melanie, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Suvro, Shelley, Joey, John, Jennifer, Doug, Muriel, Gary, Pearl, Mindy, Mary, Alda, Keith, Jean, Judy, Elizabeth, Kermit, Elliot, Martha, Tammy, Josh, Lorne, Tara, Esther, Colleen, Kaylee, Mark, Kathleen, Debbie, Carrie, Katie, Vicky, Carolyn, Yvonne, Tom, Terry, Rob, Sandra, Stella, and Pam. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways this day, remembering Chelsea, Aaron, Courtney, Vanda, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Donna, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sandra, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Carrie, Sean, Amanda, Bethany, Brooklyn, Megan, Lynn, Mackenzie, Jennifer, Mark, Tori and Lynn, Liam, Cecily and Ken, Charlene and family, Shirley and Kyla. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us remember this day all the faithful depart, especially Anne Standen, Marla Clark, Faye Campbell, Debbie Davis, John Rayner, Paisley, Sylvia, Sage, Hurley Walker, and Matthew Goodall. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in Tom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee. Said, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech you, and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. Amen. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, Mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserved the body and soul of the last man, taken with this remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you, preserve the body and soul unto the last amen. Drink this remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and you have. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank you that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you, and remain with you always.
our recessional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book, hymn number 565. Number 565. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord, close binding all mankind. Join hands then, brothers of the faith, whate'er your race may be. Who serves my father as a son is surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christ's lay souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Lord, alleluia, alleluia.